Hey everyone, my name is Scott Siemens and I am a web developer at Interworks and I'm going to be doing a short tutorial series on Drupal theme development. So in this video we're going to be installing a local testing environment, um, we're going to be installing Drupal and we're going to be setting up a child theme. So let's go ahead and just jump right in and the first thing we need to do is set up a local testing environment that runs uh, PHP, MySQL, and Apache and for Mac users we're going to need to install a program called MAMP to do that. It's found at MAMP.info and you'll see there's a free version on the left and there's a paid version on the right that comes with some additional features. Go ahead and download that. I've already downloaded and installed it. It's a rather lengthy download. Um, it's very straightforward to install just like installing any other program. For Windows users, it's the exact same thing but it's called WAMP with the W for Windows and it's found at WAMPserver.com. So make sure you can click and get the English version. Um, scroll down towards the bottom and you will see there it is. The 32-bit version on the left and the 64-bit version on the right, they are both free flavors. Just choose the appropriate one for your operating system and download that and install that and it is much the same. It's very easy and straightforward to install just like any other program. So I'm going to assume that you've downloaded those and you've gotten them installed now and let's go ahead and open them up. So MAMP is installed into the Applications folder. You'll see a MAMP folder and then MAMP.app, double click that. If it was successfully installed, you'll see here, this page pops up. It even says, if you can see this page, MAMP is installed on your Mac and everything is working. So that's awesome. We have it running. If you run into problems, go back to MAMP.info. There's a lot of good information on there to help you out. Um, go ahead and click this MAMP icon and you'll see your MAMP preferences window. You can see the, these green lights indicate that the servers are running, Apache is running, MySQL is running. But let's make some changes. So click on preferences. Go ahead and click ports, and let's set to the default Apache and MySQL ports. Uh, let's make sure the latest version of PHP available for MAMP is running, and let's uh, choose a document root folder. Now this folder is the folder you want to put all of your websites in. These are the webs, or this folder indicates that they have access to run PHP, which is critical for installing Drupal or WordPress or a lot of content management systems or PHP sites in general. So. Uh, by default, they use the htdocs folder, which is buried in your applications folder. Uh, I prefer to create a folder on my desktop. I created one called localhost, and it gives me really easy access. So select a folder you like, name it whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Click OK. It should ask for your password. And if you have two green lights, that means it's still running. Now, as you can see here, though, we were still running on eight, port 8888, and we changed those ports to port 80 and port 3306. So um, now that Apache is not running on 8888, we can get rid of those, and you'll see the website is still running normally. So let's go ahead and get to installing Drupal. First thing we need to do is create a database. I'm just going to call it my site. Database my site has been created. Uh, fortunately, we don't have to create any tables or mess with anything else. We are totally done. Um, uh, Drupal will be able to take over from here and create all the tables itself. So now we just need to install Drupal. So we need to go to drupal.org. This is the site for downloading Drupal. This is where you should get all your community support, documentation. There are plenty of other good sites out there, but I think this is by far the best. And um, so it's really important if you're going to be doing a lot of Drupal to get familiar with using the site and navigating the site and finding information on this site. Drupal.org. Uh, go ahead and scroll down and see getting started with Drupal. And then you can go ahead and download Drupal 7.10, which is the current latest stable version. And then you'll see here at the bottom, it even has recommended releases and development releases. Uh, I always recommend for anything that could go production, just installing the uh, latest recommended version. Should take just a few seconds here. After it's done, I'm going to go ahead and drag this into my localhost folder. If you recall, this is the folder that can run PHP. And I'm going to double click that and it's going to create a new folder for me. I'm going to rename this to whatever directory I want it to be called. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to call it my site. And then after that, you can delete the zip folder. Go ahead and navigate back to your browser. 
And to see if this installed correctly, go to localhost, slash my site, and as you can tell, it found it just fine. It goes ahead and pulls up the install.php file, and it walks you through the installation process, and it's very straightforward. We want the standard installation. We want English. We need to choose our database. If you recall, we made one called my site. And now we need our username and password. Now, we've never really set that up, but I will show you that if you click on MAMP and then you click on Open Start Page, scroll down here, you'll see a username and a password. Uh, it's root and root. You can change these, and it is recommended that you do, but um, since I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave mine on the default settings. If you're a Windows user, by default, I believe username is root and the password is nothing. So I think that's the difference between WAMP and MAMP. Besides that, they're pretty much the same thing. Obviously, these pages look different, but they function much in the same. So let's go ahead and type in root and root. Click Save. And now it should go ahead and install all your modules if everything is working properly. Uh, while we're doing this, we're going to need to set up a theme and a sub-theme. Um, basically, the reason for creating a child sub-theme is that if your theme ever gets upgraded, um, you don't lose any of your changes. So we like, I like to use this theme called Zen, and you can find it by typing Drupal Zen in. And it's drupal.org slash project slash Zen. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see all the different versions. I've actually already downloaded the latest version. Um, so go ahead and download the latest version of this and then put it on your desktop or wherever you'll be able to access it. And then we'll also want to install Zenophile. And it's just drupal.org slash project slash Zenophile. Scroll to the bottom. I've already downloaded this as well. But you can go ahead and grab the tar or the zip, whatever you like. Drag it into, uh, I put mine in a get, getting started folder. You can put them wherever you want though. So basically... Um, Zen, we don't want to make changes directly to it because when Zen gets updated, we'll lose all those changes. So we're going to install this child sub-theme and we can make all the changes we want to the sub-theme and it's just going to inherit from the base theme. So whenever Zen gets updated, it can get updated every day if they want to, our changes aren't going to be lost because we're just inheriting from the base theme. So that is the theory or the, I guess, the reasoning behind using sub-themes at all. It's extremely handy because, you know, it's not a good idea to just never update your themes. Um, you know, lots of security flaws and things like that come um, from not updating and not staying up to date, and you don't want that to happen to your site. Okay, now we need to configure our site real quick. Now that all those modules are installed, I'm just going to call it, I'll just put my name, Scott Siemens, email address, username, Scott, same email address for password, pick a password you're comfortable with using. I'm not going to set my country in default time zone, but you can do that if you'd like. I'm going to turn off email notifications and click save. Okay, let's view our new site. And here we go. We have Drupal running on our local machine. It's only accessible on our machine. And basically it's being powered right now by MAMP. So we need to go ahead and install the Zen theme to get us started. And to do that, click Install New Themes, choose a file, choose Zen. Takes just a second, but now we need to turn it on. So I clicked Enable and Set Theme. And after click on the Home button, you'll see here is Zen running locally. Not much to it. Like I said, it's just a base theme. It's just something to get you started. Now let's go ahead and install a module. Now, Xenophile is different from a theme in that it's a, it's a module. It's not a theme at all, but it does create child themes. That's what it was set up to do. It creates child themes using the Zen base theme. So now that we've installed that, let's go ahead and enable it. Scroll to the very bottom. You'll see there's Xenophile, Midnight, and Sidebars. These are just additional options that are added to the plugin when it's activated. For our demonstration, I'm just activating Xenophile. Now when you click on Appearance, you'll see there's a new tab that says Create Zen Sub-Theme. And it's really easy. Go ahead and choose the machine compatible name. That just means use underscores for spaces. I'm just going to name up my site. Human name Scott Siemens. Name of Scott Siemens Sub-Theme. Um, choose the site directory. We want all. And then I'll show you there's some more options here. 
Um, you can choose the Zen sub thing that you want to use, choose a layout type, and then if you want, Zen comes with some base CSS themes or CSS files, and this will create a fresh one if you prefer that. I'm just going to leave all the settings default. Now, after you click OK, you can click List, and you'll see there's a brand new theme here now called Scott Siemens, Scott Siemens sub theme. Let's enable that and set it to default. And it's now running, and that's all this to it. So we have set up a testing server, we've installed Drupal, and we've set up a child theme. And the next one, I'm going to start um, working on building this site out. Uh, if you guys have any features you would like to see, please let me know in the comments or hit me up in my email. Uh, also, if you want to find out some other good uh, Drupal information, go to innerworks.com slash blog. And there's tons of resources on here. I can't tell you how valuable this is. Um, if, like I said, if you have any ideas, let me know. I'd be happy to work them in. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks.